she's staring at. Happy Earth Day, people. It's time to play some Captain Planet. It's on this multi-cart, because I don't have the actual cart, because they only released it in Europe. And, uh, is it really worth getting? Probably not, but, uh, humor me. Because we have X number of minutes of video to... Okay, I'm putting it off long enough. Let's just get it over with. Captain Planet and the Planeteers, released in 1993 to European markets for the Sega Mega Drive, courtesy of Sega and Novocade. I, I guess... Is this even a real thing that actually saw release? I mean, I know there was a box scan and some semblance of a manual online, but the only time I've seen this in action was through the evil art of emulation. Though don't worry, that's not where we're playing. We're playing this on actual hardware, because Captain Planet is one of the 200 plus something games featured on this here multi-card, and that, that has to be worth something, I, I guess, I suppose, probably not. Anyways. So fans of the Captain Planet franchise, because they do exist, or at least they did once upon a time, I'm not quite sure, who resided in North America only had the 8-bit Nintendo game from Mindscape to satisfy their planetering escapades, and calling it less than stellar would be, um, fairly accurate, actually. The same, however, cannot be said for this Mega Drive misfire, whose only real connection with the NES game is the source material they're based upon, and that's about as far as I go in terms of credit. Now, Captain Planet and the Planeteers is a side-scrolling action game that actually has an interesting concept behind it. You have four Planeteers to play with, each of whom is held captive by a different eco-villain, and thus each Planeteer has a unique stage that they have to get through in order to escape. Picking a Planeteer will bring up a uh, briefing screen of sorts from Mati, the only Planeteer to elude capture. Conveniently, the one with the power of heart. Make of that what you will. Who will advise you on how to clear the stage? The goal depends on the stage, closing up valves in the sewer stage, destroying computer monitors in the computer level, destroying mining and cloning equipment in the mining level, or just escaping the death machines in the oil rig level. When the main stage objective is cleared, you'll move on to face off against that stage's eco-villain, and once they're defeated, that planeteer is freed, and you can move on to the next. You can't pick and choose which Planeteer tackles which stages, the game determines this beforehand, and it's usually a random affair, which means you're never gonna play the same Planeteer in the same stage twice. Once every 16 tries or whatever. Which sucks on paper, but it doesn't really matter because each Planeteer plays the exact same way. You could run, jump, crawl under narrow passages, hang on to certain bits and bobs, and of course, shoot projectiles from your elemental planeteering ring, either a single shot or a multi-shot, which the game calls a super shot. You only have a limited number of shots before your power meter expires, and once it does, then you can only get a shot out once every few seconds, which means you're more or less defenseless and thus pretty much screwed. Fortunately, certain enemies and gimmicks will drop pickups when you defeat them, so it's not a total lost cause, just a partial one, but we're jumping ahead here. So far, it's pretty standard stuff for the most part, but what makes this Captain Planet game at least interesting on paper is that you don't have a set number of lives. You lose, you go back to Hope Island to try the stage again, or pick another, and you could try again as many times as you like. So in a way, you do have unlimited lives, almost. But the caveat here is the timer on top of the screen. Basically, the game gives you a real-life hour to free all the Planeteers from their respective stages so that you can all summon Captain Planet and tackle the final stage, which has Captain Planet preventing the disarmed Doomsday Barge from reaching Hope Island, and, and that's the final level and such. And once that's taken care of, whatever time is left over is tallied to your final score. Time is constantly ticking, whether you're in the thick of things or whether you're on the stage select, waiting for the end to come. I do like the sky growing darker at Hope Island with the passage of time, adding a sense of urgency. And of course, if time runs out, it's game over. It's a neat idea that provides a nice bit of balance of sorts. Not having a lives counter means no worries about a game over early on, and thus you could attempt a stage as many times as you want. And at first, that's probably going to be a thing. 
But that ticking clock is a reminder that, yeah, you better shape up soon because you only got that long to complete this relatively short game. And for what it's worth, the overall premise isn't a bad one. Guiding each planeteer through their own stages, clearing them all to summon Captain Planet so he could save the world before time runs out. It's not a high concept or anything, but it is a unique idea. Now, some could argue that there isn't enough Captain Planet featured in this Captain Planet video game, and that is a fair argument to make, especially when you consider that the NES game gave you a nice balance of planeteering and Captain Planeting. But in this game's defense, I would argue it's merely following the cartoon's basic formula, where the planeteers do most of the grunt work for most of the episode, while the hero comes in at the end to do the finishing and pretty much take all the credit. On paper, it sounds fine. But then there's the execution, which, quite frankly, isn't very good. Controlling your planeteer seems simple enough, at least on paper. You have a jump button, a shot button, and a super shot button, and you could choose from a number of button mapping configurations to see which suits your fancy, which is nice. What's not so nice, however, is the actual control itself, which is generally bad. Your planeteer has awkward jumping physics, they move about a bit too quickly, and with a bit of a slippery step at that, trying to land on narrow platforms, pipes, or whatever, something you'll need to do in the dreaded sewer section especially, is problematic because of that slippery step. Your planeteer can grab onto hanging pipes and similar things rather easily, or rather too easily, because it happens automatically whenever you touch such an object, which can sometimes be inconvenient. And yet coincidentally, in order to grab onto this valve thing that you need to turn off to clear the sewer stage, you actually have to hold up on the D-pad to grab said valve, which goes against what the game was already showing you with the pipes and stuff, and... I don't know. Controlling Captain Planet is only slightly better in that he can at least fly around and has unlimited shots to take care of all this crap on the barge, but beyond that, he's no more of a step above the usual planeteer template. And that's probably the biggest missed opportunity here. All the planeteers are merely interchangeable skins of the same basic character template with the same basic actions, and the game does nothing to take advantage of these four kids with supposed control over the different elements, which could have been inspiration for interesting scenarios for the game to throw at you. I mean, Captain Planet on the NES isn't great, but at least that game presented situations that required you to use specific powers to overcome which is more than what can be said for this game. Instead, random planeteers are placed in random stages doing random things that don't play into their supposed skills. And the stages themselves aren't exactly well thought out either. Lots of cramped areas with constant enemies being tossed your way, some of which blend into the background so you don't notice them until you suddenly take a hit. A lot of these maze-like structures with seemingly no rhyme or reason behind them, the worst offender obviously being the sewer level, Shutting off the valves and avoiding rising water levels because water will gradually hurt you if you're touching it, even if you're only toe deep in water, which is nice. I should mention that Captain Planet does sport a difficulty select, offering four levels of difficulty for you to set. Easy, normal, hard, and cheat, which basically gives you unlimited health and ammo. And cheat difficulty is not something you earn or unlock via a code. It's something that's available from the very start in the options screen. And if you have to go so far as to include a cheat difficulty from the get-go, then I don't know what to tell you. The graphics are the only high point in Captain Planet, which isn't saying much because it's not a spectacular looking game in general, but to its credit, the characters at least resemble the characters on the show, as do the few mugshots, the stages aren't too bad looking despite their somewhat chaotic layouts. Well, the sewer level is kind of shit, but that's rather obvious in any context. I mean, look, this isn't exactly 16-bit high-definition blast processing welcoming you to the next level or whatever stupid taglines I could regurgitate, but at the very least, the game looks the part, and in this case, Genesis does the bare minimum. On the other hand, Captain Planet sports some of the most horrendous sound design I've come across on the Genesis side of things. My understanding and the uh, limited research I've done for this game for whatever reason, is that it uses something called the GEMS Sound Driver, which is prevalent across many Genesis titles and perhaps best known for having a bit of a twang quality to its sound design that people hate. And sure enough, there's more than enough twang to be had here, including grinding wet farts and irritating screeching sounds from the rats in the sewers. I swear this isn't a gag unless they designed that fucking level that way. And, um, oh yeah, the music is also fucking horrible, and uh, that's it. I've got nothing else to say. 
Overall, Captain Planet and the Planeteers for the Sega Mega Drive is uh, pretty dreadful. And the really sad thing is that even given the license it's based upon, it didn't have to be. I like the premise on paper, there's something of a decent game to be had with the format that it was aiming for, but the overall execution of that premise ended up being highly toxic levels of digital pollution that would put modern social media to shame. Actually, I take it back, modern social media is digital pollution enough to put any other form of pollution to shame. But that's a story for another time. All in all, this is another one to add to the pile of licensed dodge filling our landfills. And anyone who absolutely needs their fix of Captain Planet in their lives, just stick with the cartoon. You're better off there. And this is how Captain Planet began his slow descent and eventual transformation into Don Cheadle. Nobody is going to get that.